All right, let's talk about your car. What it is is just basically a big computer on wheels. Now, what do we have with computers and phones and tablets? Ah, yes, people, companies listening in and collecting all types of data. But what is your car really collecting? Now, there's a new report from the Mozilla Foundation, and it's a lot of data. Of the 25 car brands that they studied, all of them collected personal data. You know, it's hard to think about this, that your car is actually collecting dirt on you. The Mozilla Foundation, of course, you know, it's a nonprofit. It analyzes safety, privacy of a whole slew of products. And they said it's the worst product it ever reviewed for privacy is our cars. Oh, my gosh. So joining us right now is uh, Jen Kaltreiter. She's the program director for Mozilla's Privacy Not Included. And we're going to talk about this report. So our cars are collecting data. What type of data? You name it, it can collect it. Cars are very interesting because there's uh, the car itself, which we'll consider a device. It has sensors right. that can track where you're going, how fast you're going, how much you weigh, how many people are with you. It's got microphones. It's got cameras that face in and look at you. It's got cameras that face out and look at the public. Um, and then there's the connected services that, that the cars use, whether that's um, the radio service you're listening to or the navigation system or the emergency service service that, that if you crash, um, on and on and on. Those are all services that are also collecting data. And then there's the apps. Cars come with apps now. They didn't used to come with apps. They come with apps now. Those apps do great things, like you start your car remotely or honk your horn, but they also collect data. And so taken amongst just all of that, on top of your car dealer <laughs> collecting data and on and on, there's so much data. Um, but it's not just that they're collecting so much data. It's how much, how much, how like brutally honest I think they were in their privacy policies about what they were collecting. Two car companies said they could collect information about your sexual activity and your sex life. Um, I think six oh, car companies God. mentioned genetic information, um, union membership, on and on, just things that you're like, why does a car need to know this about me? And and what are they doing with all that data, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, um, they're going to use it to make money because that's what that's what data is these days. It's it's money for, for companies. So they want to get as much of it as they can. And cars can collect a lot of, of data. And and so they share it. They use it um, internally. Car conglomerates are huge. And so they share it amongst their family of businesses to, to target you with advertising. They share it out with third-party advertisers or sell it to third-party advertisers for them to target you with ads um, to make to make more money. Um, they collect data from data brokers to build a profile on you that, that gives people even more insight into who you are. And say, and then they make, say they can make things in things about you, like inferences about your intelligence or your abilities. <laughs> I'm like, I don't want a car company to make an inference about my <laughs> intelligence. That's creepy. Um, but then the, one of the maybe the creepiest things they say they can share it with is law enforcement and government with a very low oh. bar. We saw companies say they could share personal information that they collect on you from their cars and apps with something as simple as an informal request from government. And that's when we start to get into the, holy cow, this seems really dangerous. Well, what exactly is an informal request? I mean, do we just call them up and say, hey, you know, I'm Bob at the sheriff's office and at the PD, and I'm just wondering if I can get Kim and Jen's uh, car records? I mean, is that it? Yeah, I'm curious what an informal request looks like, too. I yeah. mean, are you, if you're having a beer with the sheriff and <laughs> you're like, hey, <laughs> exactly. can I get this data? Yeah, I don't I don't know. And and that's why it scares me. So, you know, there is the Vehicle Privacy Report website uh, that you can punch in your VIN and then it will tell you what type of data that's collecting. And my husband's new car is that has facial recognition in. Uh, he also gives his fingerprint in order to turn on the infotainment system. Uh, and it's got all kinds of bells and whistles. I mean, this thing is literally just a computer on wheels. I mean, that's that's all it is. Have you found certain brands to collect more data than other brands, or is this pretty much universal? If you have a connected car, this is just an expectation. Yeah, I think that if you have an expectation, if you have a connected car, it is an expectation that they're collecting a lot of information. What we did find was some car companies just outright, outright came out in their privacy policies and admitted to collecting a lot more information. Like I said, when Kia says they can collect information about your sex life, that raises an eyebrow. Um, you know, 
but other companies are a little more vague. They say they can collect sensitive personal information, like, for example. Um, and then maybe they don't go into as much detail as Kia or Nissan did, but they're probably still collecting a lot of that data. Um, and they're all collecting tons of what we call telematics. You know, the, the you know, you used to, your in car insurance company used to say, hey, we'll send you a dongle if you plug it in and you drive sure. safe, we'll give you a discount. And that was, you know, a little creepy, but you could opt into that. Now all that that tracking um, is already built into the car, so you're not able to opt out of it, and that's what's scary. Can can you can you see the data? I mean, can you have access to it, or is it something that you know, in order to drive the car, like with an app, you just have to click agree and you know just kind of <laughs> take it as it rolls. Yeah, it's a good question. I mean, you, you, seeing the data is is tricky, and and depending on where you live, you have you know people in California have more rights to have their delete data deleted than I do in in Vermont. Say, I tried to have my car company delete my data, and when they ask what state I lived in, there's like, oh, sorry, we don't have to delete your data. Um, but then there's the yeah, the choice and the consent gets very interesting with cars. Um, Subaru was an interesting privacy policy to read because the way their privacy policy reads, it seems to be that if you're a user of a connected car, which means if you're a passenger, you've consented to their privacy policy. And I don't know, I feel like consent should be a little more explicit to have so much data collected and shared. Um, and then there's, like you mentioned, the, you know, Tesla has an interesting line in their privacy policy where they're like, hey, we know people die, buy our cars because they're connected. But if you want to opt out for of data sharing for privacy reasons, you can go ahead and then you keep reading and they say, but if you do, your car might become inoperable or become dangerous. <laughs> you're like, oh, that's not much of a choice. No, you know what? So, if, yeah, here's the deal with the Tesla, Jen, much. is that if you opt out, they actually turn on full self-driving mode. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so with this report, uh, when folks take a look at it, can they can they just type in their make and model and then see what the collection is over on the Mozilla website? Yeah, well, they can go there. There's a category page. If you go to privacynotincluded.org, you'll see a category for cars, and then you can go in there and click on your car, and we've got a whole full review um, with more information than you might even care to read about laying all out what they're collecting, how they're using it, how they're sharing it, how they're protecting it, um, and some tip. We have some tips there to help you protect yourselves, but the biggest tip I can give consumers today is we've got to put the pressure on the regulators and the policymakers to step up and do better because they're really aren't good choices for consumers right now. Or you just stick with that 2002 car and I, I'm going to drive around my 1946 Chevy pickup. How about that? <laughs> yeah, that's great. If you know how to fix it. Yeah, that's that's the old problem. You know what? I'll tell you, the 1946 pickup truck, okay, you can't go over 40 miles per hour. That's just the way that it is. I mean, you know, but there's no data being collected. So there it is. Uh, Jen, thank you so much for sharing uh, this report with us. And folks, once again, in case you want to check it out, it's at privacynotincluded.org.